get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, you know, I'm gonna introduce today's guest, uh, founder of, co-founder of Penji, Jonathan, in a second. Jonathan, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out. Um, and I was thinking based on today, based on Penji, I'm like, what would be an interesting interview? So I interviewed um, Daniel Harmon of the Harmon Brothers. And you know, they talk about creative and they did some of the ads that, you know, are behind Purple Mattress and Poopourri and some other amazing stuff. So check that out. He breaks down their process, their creative process. And, and um, what, was, what was struck me, Jonathan, with that is you think, oh, the videos go viral. Well, yeah, but they drove tons of traffic to those videos. So the organic, you know, the, the paid, um, you know, meets the eye. People are like, oh, these went totally viral. But they had a lot of back end steps and paid traffic to help with that stuff. So check that out. Many more on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, Jonathan, for me, the number one thing is relationships. And I'm always looking at a way to give to my relationships. And I've found no better way over the past 10 years to profile the people and the companies I admire and give to them and shout out from the rooftops what they're working on, what they're doing. So if you and I've been doing it for over 10 years, we were just talking about good friend Andrew Warner at Mixergy um, back in when that was like one of the early on um, business interview podcasts uh, and video also. So if you have questions, you've always thought, I want to start a podcast or I want to do it the right way. So uh, you can go to rise25.com and check out more. And we're happy to answer any questions that you have. And I'm excited. Jonathan Grzybowski is the CMO and co-founder of Penji. And if you haven't heard of Penji, it's a service that basically simplifies the creative process. And it does that by offering unlimited and on-demand access to vetted designers that will deliver a project in under 48 hours. And the key to this, Jonathan, is vetted designers because you and I both know you could find designers, but you know, if then you have to go through all this work and you have to manage them and then you have to, well, then it drops off or they don't get the project. Like, forget about that. They've already vetted these people and they, you give them what you need and they have beautiful design. You go to Penji.com, Penji.co actually to check them out. Um, Penji obtained an Inc. 5,000 or three years and was nominated as one of the top startups to watch according to tech.co. And Jonathan, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You know, I was doing research ahead of time and um, one quote you said stuck out. And uh, you said, I ate dirt for four to six years. Yeah, absolutely. So um, no real paycheck for six years. Um, what kept you going during those times? Uh, just relentless desire to do more in life, to be better, to, to f figure out the world, the equation of business, um, to, to really just help more people. I think in order for you to succeed in just my story, our story in particular, it was a lot of trial and tribulations, a lot of failure. Um, and the one thing that I think always allowed us to succeed was just the ability to be, to end the day 1% better than in which you started. And it took a long time to figure it out. And I'm just grateful that we built that internal aspect, that tenacity, that grit from the very beginning, because it, even to this day, as we obtain, you know, somewhat success. Um, we're still hungry the same day that the, the same, in the same way that we were from the very beginning. Um, so you, sometimes when you obtain su success, you tend to take your foot a little slightly off the, the pedal a little bit because you're just like, listen, I'm in cruise control now. I'm good to go. Like we're, we got money right now where people are eating 
um, uh, the, the company is growing, but like, that's just not our mentality. We don't want to just grow. We want to just, we want Penji to be synonymous with the word graphic design. You know, we want thousands and millions of people to be able to um, interact with our brand, to talk to our designers. And so, you know, that's the, that's when the job will be done. And even then, I don't think that we'll still be uh, going on vacation and sipping pina coladas or whatever it is on uh, to watch the sunset. I, I, I think the, the three founders, uh, in addition to all the people that work for us, they, um, they all want, they're all hungry for more. And, and that just inspires me to, to work even harder. What did life look like personally and professionally at that time? What was, when you think back to that time, what sticks out as a, is a difficult time. I would say the first thing that popped in my head was not necessarily having an office and being able to having to get internet and, and kind of just like, I remember living in Philadelphia uh, and going to Starbucks every single day, taking appointments, not spending money on coffee because I couldn't afford it. I also don't like coffee. So that kind of works in my favor. Um, going to Starbucks on 18th and like spruce and having like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and literally just making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for, you know, pretty much three or four that day and just eating that all day, you know, just to try and save money here and there. I think I don't know if that was like a downtime, but like that just, I, I, when I think about like sacrifice, I think about those moments where it's like, you know, I, I, I this is what I did to, to make sure that I got, I was living an optimal life and, and, and investing it all back into the business. So that was like the first thing that popped in my head, but I'm sure there's a, a million yeah. better answers than that one. No, I mean, that, I, you know, that was just your routine, right? I mean, you were bootstrapped and that was your routine and you'd, you know, you know, get the internet, free internet from Starbucks and make your yeah. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, you know, I want to kind of highlight a little bit of what you guys do as a company. And um, I know you've worked with HopeWorks and I don't know if you want to talk about HopeWorks and, and what you did for them. Yeah, I mean, they're, so they're a nonprofit in our area. They do a lot of amazing things because what they do is they go to uh, underserved communities and they uh, help the youth obtain jobs in tech companies and things like that. And we work very closely with them. We believe very heavily in what they what they believe in. Uh, they were more or less one of the, the, the kickstarters to our Penji for Good campaign that we've started. Uh, ever since the beginning of Penji, we've always given back. We started the company by offering our services to nonprofits for one dollar a, a, a month. They've been a customer <clears throat> that's been offered that for the duration of our entire existence of business because of we believe so heavily in what they do. Uh, and because of that foundation of Penji for Good, it's launched so many other campaigns, uh, things like Penji Against Hate. Uh, to kind of just combat uh, and help nonprofits that are fighting systemic racism, um, especially that in the Asian community. We, sir, uh, I, I would say 97% of our workforce is of Asian descent of some kind. And so, uh, including my co-founder who is, who is Vietnamese, um, those are, are things that like we built from the beginning of the company uh, and, and started that and then you know kind of worried about profit second believe it or not uh usually it's the other way around uh it ended up working in our favor you know you're a people-powered business um talk about hiring and vetting what's your process for that yeah i think we could go a little bit of a, a unique approach to to that in in the aspect where skill set is probably the last thing that we worry about when we hire a new team member um skill in our opinion can be taught over time and even if they are not the most skillful graphic designer in the world uh, they may actually be better uh, fitted in other areas of the business what we really higher on is the kind of what you said, the people aspect of it, the, the personal aspect of it. We ask questions like, what is your dream? Uh, that's the, one of the first questions that we ask our, our new hires. 
Um, some of them want to become uh, amazing moms. Uh, some of them just want a job. Some of them want to just get paid. Other people want to be um, uh, uh, professors. And so understanding what they want to be when they grow up, so to speak, it allows us to make more thoughtful decisions and how to manage the individual um, because we know what their driving force is. Um, and that's just like a, a human, a human aspect of it. So that's how we hire, how, how we vet. Uh, we, we do put all of our designers through a pretty strenuous training process where they go through a number of tests. Uh, I'd say around like 98% of the people do not pass the first set of, of, of tests that we give them. Uh, and then so once they're able to pass that test, in addition to a lot of uh, personal you know, questions and things like that, that's when they become a, a potential full time team member of, of Penji. So when you sign up for a service like ours, you're getting what we believe is is well rounded uh, uh, designers um, that are going to be able to understand your brand relatively quickly. You know, also to manage a company like yours, there's got to be a lot of processes, systems in place. What are some software as you use or tools is, to manage everything? This is going to be the most boring as hell answer that you can possibly hear. Uh, Google Drive is probably the best, the best thing for us. Um, you're right in, in the aspect that we do have a lot of systems and processes because a lot of people need to be able to, to receive training to be able to do job X, something new happens all of a sudden, you need to be able to push that out to the general masses uh, in order to uh, get the, the clarity that they understand what they have to do. So in my personal opinion, uh, again, boring as hell answer, but Google Drive is probably the best thing. What we typically do is we, we have our team members uh, sign off on the fact that they listen to it. We also use Loom as well. Uh, I think that's a really good tool as well. So I think the balance between um, uh, tools is the, you have to be able to create a tool, use the tool to the, the benefit of the person on the other end. So what we do usually is we poll the person ahead of time and we say, are you more auditorial? Are you more visual? Are you more a reader? And the amount of people that answer that question is astronomical. Uh, you would think you're like, this person's got to be an, a visual person. They're like, no, I like reading instead. So we literally write out everything. Then we make a video about it in order to make sure that they understand what the heck they have to do. What about from the managing clients side? Do you use uh, project management? Oh, managing. Okay. So we've actually uh, are blessed in the aspect that we have uh, an amazing uh, team of graphic designers and developers. And so if I could give you a competitive edge is, is our, our, our team, our internal team in, in to build things. If we design it, it's built within the next couple of days. And so we have a tech team that, um, that, has created a internal process in order to manage our clients. Um, we then in turn give that to our customers to use. So in a way, as much as we are a graphic design service, I'd say at the forefront, we're a technology company that's powered by a graphic design service. And, and I think that in itself allows us for more to be more agile and I would say uh, helps us scale the, the, the cost, the, the company as well. Yeah. So you don't, you, you kind of built your own, you don't use like an Asana or a ClickUp or a Trello type of. We did use customer. Trello in the very beginning. Uh, I'd say the first like 10 to 20 something customers were, were Trello. Um, and it worked really well, but the problem is that this just becomes too much of a, a management issue uh you, you, you there's a lot of pages that go unturned you end up missing a lot and so what i what we realized in the very beginning is and and i would say you probably are the same way every human being is the same way is we want to feel heard we want to be understood and and so if you can translate that it from your humanity aspect of it and you translate that to your customers i think you're going to have an amazing business no matter what it is that you do and so we felt that our customers weren't li being listened to. They weren't being heard and we had to change it. Talk about pricing, Jonathan. So pricing, 
when you first started and then pr versus pricing now? The pricing that we started with was $79 and we were stupid. We were idiots for even coming up with that. Why did you choose that? Uh, honestly, we just threw a dart on a dartboard and we're like $79. That seems about fair. But I think if anything, it says more about our mindset at the time than it does anything else. We weren't confident enough in our service to charge what we charge now, which still isn't a lot of money, but we thought to ourselves, $79, you know, that's something that like I can afford and I would buy it. So if I would buy it, then, then somebody else would buy it too. What was included in that $79 just to give people a sense? Was Literally everything that you, <laughs> that is, is the service now. Um, so I'm a little design and then do someone at the time, did someone have to wait to get something back to put in another request? At the time, that, that's kind of how it works now, which okay. is you you submit an idea, you submit a project, the project then goes into a queue, then the, the designer works on it. Once it's complete, then it removes out of your queue and then the, the new one happens. So the same things would have would have happened uh, back then with that 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 price point. It just wasn't I think we got to about like 10 to 15 people and we we're just like we're working way too hard and we're receiving pennies. And it's just not sustainable for any business. Like we were in the negative for a decent amount of time because we were just the amount of money it took to, to service the customer. We just didn't know who our customer was at the time. Um, we were afraid to ask questions. We didn't understand who was buying it. We just said, hey, you know, this is the service. If we got it at a low enough price point, come at it, come eat, we'll serve you food. But it just, it ran us to the ground. So at what point did you change the pricing and how did you let those people know, by the way, it's not 79 anymore? We actually let them keep it. Oh, we did. Um, so you grandfather yeah. them in. Yeah, we grandfather. So every time that we've ever, and this is something that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, I think at the end of the day, no matter whether we get a hundred sales a day, whether we get no sales a day, I can go to bed happy knowing that we take care of the people uh, of our customers and we take care of our employees. Uh, we've every time that we've ever increased our prices, we've always emailed the customers and let them know that we grandfathered them into the original price. Um, yes, we could have made more money, but the at the end of the day, I think the 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 voice you're talking about um, voices about how you like to get on the the rooftops. I don't know whether it was on air or off air, where you just like to promote other people. I think to me that idea ideology of of life speaks even more in the aspect of business because if we could have more advocates of, for of people that are talking about us in a positive way um it's going to yield more of a of a community in the in the idea of our business so we kind of hedged our bets off of that than we did just making a quick dollar so what were the price increases over time? So from 79, take me through the evolution of pricing. I think it was 79, 199, 299, 399, 499. So now there's three tiers. There's a $399 a month option as of this point in time, a 49, $499 a month option and an $899 a month option. Correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And each one has its own pros and cons. Um, what I particularly like is about our service in particular, and I'm speaking, I'm not even speaking to this as a co-founder. I'm, I'm speaking to this as like an actual client of my own company is sometimes when you hire a designer, you get the designer and the skill set of one particular style and one particular skill set. You hire this, hey, I need a web design. Web design is amazing. I need this to be done. But then that same web designer isn't able to create a logo and that same designer isn't able to uh, cartoonify yourself or whatever it may be. So with one Penji membership, you're, you have the flexibility of having multiple styles and skill sets inside of your account. Um, and so that's why we were able to increase, the, increase that because the specializations became more refined and the designers became better. John, who's an ideal customer for you? Anyone that creates content on a routine basis, whether that is for yourself as a solopreneur, 
whether that is a small business owner, uh, whether that is an influencer, whether that's a, a, a marketing agency of some kind. If you are creating content and you are doing all of the graphic design yourself, then there's a strong chance that there's other elements of your life or business that are going by the wayside. And we want to take over that aspect of your life by just doing the graphic design. For the most popular, the team version right now, the $4.99 a month version, what, uh, what's a typical kind of profile? How big is the company? Um, honestly, like, it's funny you ask that because we were just looking at the numbers early, earlier, yesterday, not today, but yesterday. It's like, it like there's no right answer to this question. There's, we have a ton of small businesses uh, that, that, that use it. There's also a lot of agencies that use it. Um, I think the consistent trend though, if I could just go back and kind of like, shy uh incorrectly answer your question um would just be people who are creating content uh but i i, I can say people on the team plan they they are mo mostly like probably under 10 under 10 10 on uh under 10 employees i would say that at what level of a company do you find they just want to do it in-house and maybe um, maybe you even disagree with them doing it in house, but but we'll we'll put that aside for a second. And what what <laughs> size? Them, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> what size um, do you find there's an objection of like we're just going to do this in house, even if it's maybe not the correct decision? Uh, I'm going to answer this in a different way. I Go don't ahead. necessarily think that it's based off of the number. I think it's based off of the mindset. I think a lot of people uh, are really bad at communication. Uh, even though they think that they are. And I would say that if the people that end up doing it in-house, they, what they really are asking for is, I want somebody within arm's reach to be able to spontaneously have a thought and then be able to send it over to that person to get it done immediately. That are, those are the people that want to bring it in-house. Um, however, if you are able to articulate yourself uh, be able to submit an idea in a very clear and cohesive fashion, then I would say that you wouldn't have to do that. Um, so it's more, it more so says a, more about the person that's leaving our service than it does about the service in itself. What kind of staffing do you have to maintain to provide service to your customers? I imagine you have a, a large staff because you have a lot of design that you have to take care of for people. Yeah. So you want to know the yeah? Like, what are your staffing? What's your staffing look like? Um, I think we're close to around one seventy ish right now. So it's one of those things where we are always hiring. Um, you know, we're bringing ten, two to five, uh, probably more a a, a month. Um, so like the way that our philosophy is when it comes to hiring is that we're always hiring, even when we're not, because we can, that we never want to pass up a potential, you know, great opportunity. Um, so yeah, I mean, how do you find good hard. talent? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great question because it's, it's a problem that we still haven't solved. Um, I think. Word of mouth is really good. Uh, we have a large enough team where if we say, hey, post this on social media, um, they might be able to get some people hit it. But that's not the most like reliable, sustainable aspect of it. Um, I don't think we have like the best solution for that, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think there's a lot of room for growth in that, that area. It's just hard to, in general to find good people. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. Yeah. What about roles? How did you divide your roles with your co-founders? I know as you title yourself CMO. Yeah, it's a stupid title. I mean, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what I am. But how do we decipher it? Um, yeah. I think we have to, I, I think our strength is our ability to know each other. And so Kai is our CEO because 
and this is a hard aspect from a person who has a giant ego like myself is being able to give another person full control and say like, no, like this is your, this is your realm. Like you got to do this um, and not overstep the boundaries. Um, that is very hard to do, but it's what's best for the company. And so I think ego aside, you have to look at it and say, what, what is going to bring the best results? What is going to yield the best results? And this, this is the answer. I'm really good at operations. I'm really good at, at expanding the brand. Um, and it, it takes a lot of soul searching to be like, you know, what, what am I really good at? You know, what, what am I bringing to the table? Uh, for me, it's brand expansion. It's making the name synony Penji synonymous with the word graphic design. That's what I'm good at. Uh, I'm really good at getting into places that I shouldn't be in. Uh, that's always been my men like always been my skill set my entire life. Like, like what? I mean, there were times where like even when I was 23 in my first year of entrepreneurship of running my own business, I was in meetings with people like high name businesses because they just like liked who I am. And I found a way to like cold email them or I found a way to like I remember I got a meeting with Subaru because I I like followed him in the bathroom. Like the CEO of Subaru, I legitimately was like, oh, this dude's got like, I, I just corner my eye, saw him go to the bathroom, wash my hands and be like, oh, hey, man, like, you know, X, you know, what's up? Started talking to him, ended up getting a meeting. So, um, you know, things like that has always been my, uh, my, my skill set. And I, and I, and I, and I realized that maybe a little too late because sometimes you kind of put these these blinders on in your eyes thinking that you're better at something else that you're really not. And I really just like hit if, if, if I guess the moral of the story and why I'm sharing this is you need to find whatever it is that you're good at and only do that. Um, and, and everything else that you're not good at either outsource or hire, you know, hire somebody else to do it or give it to a co-founder if you have them, but only do the things that you're good at. And I think that's, that's allowing us to, to move at light speed. Yeah, I think, Jonathan, you know, in the beginning, people are you and your friends, you're doing whatever, like you're doing everything that you need to do. And then over time, as you grow, you probably have to have to like, start to specialize and, and like, have those conversations, I imagine, right? 100%, yeah. But it's probably hard, sometimes to just decipher that out, because probably for so long, you're doing whatever you, you know, and anything and everything. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's, we were janitors at one point, I'm sure. Like, like it didn't matter what the hell we were. We, we wanted to grow the company. And you're 100% right. I think uh, a lot of what we do now is just more so backed off of like really sound decisions. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but we, we had to do it in order to grow. Um, that was the only, the only way. Talk about um, what I find with you and the company. You're very good at outreach. Um, yeah. Talk about your thought process and methodology, what you do for outreach. Yeah, uh, I'm almost positive we outreached you in order. To, yeah, <laughs> um, I love it. Like, you know, when I get a cold email, I usually answer every single one if it's good. And when it's bad, I especially email that person and say, listen, bro, you suck. You know, and, and like and I try to be nice about it, but I think. If I'm a little harsh, I think it it it, it usually lights a little a different fire under people, um, because if you can't take it, then you know you're not going to succeed anyways. But my viewpoint in outreach is to make it as personal as possible, uh, in order to make a comment about an individual's um, likes and and potential dislikes if they voice them. At the end of the day, we are all human being. And if you're able to communicate with that person on what drives them, I think they're more likely to entertain a conversation than that of saying, hello, uh, Dr. Jeremy, uh, you know, this is, uh, we, we specialize in SEO in order to get you number one on Google. Do you want to get number one on Google or do you want your competitors to, uh, to eat your, uh, your lunch for you? I don't know. This is off the top of my head. You're probably not going to answer that question, like straight up. You're not going to answer that email. So um, I'm going to assume the person that emailed you had something very uh, specific to say about whether they listened to a show uh, or something of that nature. And it, it prompted, usually it prompts a response. 
Um, now, the people do actually listen to the show, so it's not just like made up stuff. Um, I, that's been ingrained in their in their training is you have to it has to be real. It has to be genuine, because if it's not, the person's going to know that you didn't watch the episode or the person's going to know that you just looked at their Twitter feed. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pull out a specific example because it's interesting because I was looking at today, I searched Penji in my inbox and I, you know, there's a slew of messages over since, you know, dating back to 2018, actually. And um, mm. I'll, I'll talk about the email, the, the line that got me, I'm like, yeah, but let's just do this. Um, <laughs> but what other elements of a good cold email? So personalization is a big one, making sure, and people can you know, spot that if someone's like, hey, I watched your episode or I listened to this episode, I can, you just get a sense, did they really watch it or are they just yeah. pulling one thing? I mean, first of all, that's a step above most people. The fact that, that, they, lo the that, fact that they looked, they at least found some, like uh, a title of one of the episodes, I'll give them credit for that. Like, even if they didn't listen to it, that's above what most people will do anyways. But what are some other elements that you find in a good cold email? I don't think you should sell. I don't think you should sell in the first email. Um, that's just me. Um, now I think you should partial sell uh, because it's if if you just say, "Hey, like I'm going to use my, myself as an example," uh, and anybody listening to me that wants to cold email me, now you you have your subject line. Big Sixers, <laughs> big Sixers fan, uh, big basketball guy. Um, Hey, uh, yesterday they played the Milwaukee Bucks and they got destroyed. Uh, hey, Jonathan, uh, Sixers played in Milwaukee yesterday and they got, you know, their butts banked. Yeah. Uh, do you think they're going to win the championship this year? End story. Yeah, uh, yeah Jonathan, season, I had Pat Williams on the podcast. I don't know if you know who Pat Williams is. He's kind of considered the, the founder of the Orlando Magic. He went door to door selling season tickets, but he was the one in charge of drafting Charles Barkley. Interesting for the Sixers. Interesting. So, I didn't anyways, know that. Yeah, that I'll have to listen to that. One. Yeah, um, amazing one. icon, and you know, has done a lot. He dra he was in charge of draft drafting Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, like yeah. just really interesting. So, anyways, That's cool. I keep going. So, yeah, personalization. Story. So, I would if I was messaging you, I found that out. I'd be like, hey, John, like I want to use the guys, Jonathan. I had Pat Williams on 100%. who drafted Charles Barkley. You should definitely listen to this interview. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Even if you're like, like, yeah, that's a perfect way. If you, if you give content to people, like if you're creating the content and you're saying, Hey, you know, I found this, that you might be interested in, uh, by the way, um, my name is so-and-so and and i do this. Mm -hmm. I, now the hard part is, is to sell on the second email, which it might take a little bit more time, but I'd argue that it's still better than an immediate no. 100 percent. So, i mean even yeah. the 12th time i right. mean so what would be like give me an example of a outreach like messaging and then what would you say when you introduce because i think a lot of people are like me i'm just more like hey i'm here I i'm not like probably not even saying what we do ever yeah. unless someone yeah. asks so i maybe go the opposite of sure. that what at what point how do you navigate the ask and not have it sound like an ask, I guess. Yeah. So I think the answer depends on what your sales funnel, the, the end of your sales funnel is for yeah. us in particular. Um, you know, I think for a, per, a certain time it was, Hey, try us out and we'll give you a, a you know, a project to test us out. Um, for others, it could be a phone call or a zoom meeting. Um, and then that's where you'd probably sell. It was a little harder for us because what we wanted to do is just drive them to the website. So if they were to drive to the website, then they'd have a better understanding of who we are. So even if they didn't really need our service, as long as they went to our pricing page, the uh, the rest of the the uh, the interwebs would do the the talking for us. Um, so what would the call to action be? How would you drive them to the pricing page? Yeah, I would just say, hey, uh, the the usually a line would be something along the lines of like, um, if you're if you're ever too busy, if you're if you're too busy doing all the graphic designs yourself, um, you might want to consider hiring uh, a service like Penji. Um, and then usually the word unlimited graphic design was a really good pull um, as well, 
but I don't think that same who we are now. I don't think it would work the same way. Hmm. Just being perfectly honest, we don't really do that type of sales outreach anymore. Um, we use it for conversations like this. Yeah. Know? So now you're focused more on content marketing, creation, SEO. Would you say? I would say I would say that's a very um, I would say that it's very a very important strategy. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So when I look back, Jonathan, since 2018. I've been getting messages um, from some of your team members. Very good, you know, I think I, I typically always respond to my messages, like same with you, like whether it's good or bad, I'll typically just respond. I'm probably not as harsh as you as I should be with this is a bad email, <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, but I definitely screenshot it and use it in my webinars and, and block out the name and go, here's an example of a bad email <laughs> uh, <laughs> outreach. But um, yeah, the, the line that got me and, um, you know, th they're definitely personalized emails that um, will mention one of the interviews that they watched or saw or, or looked at. And, and one of them was the title of one of my, my um, episodes it was like largest black owned security firm. And they went on saying, talking about that podcast episode that I, that I came out with. And, mm. But the line that got me, it was from Kim. So shout out to Kim. Um, Kim wrote, um, I'm sure your schedule is absolutely insane, but at Penji, we believe a podcast mention is more than just an interview. It's the start of a friendship. Mm. So I guess I'm a sucker for the Hallmark cards or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I totally agree with that philosophy. And that philosophy, I was like, yeah, that, that's exactly how I think about things. So I think if it's not just personalization, if you could, you resonate with the person's philosophy and someone yeah, may have a different exactly. philosophy, you know, and then even now, if, and they basically just, they weren't, they just say, if now is not the right time, we just want to provide, you know, way, any way we can provide value for you. And it kind of went on, but that was, I was like, yeah, and that's how I view these type of interviews and people, right? It's a start of friendship. It's a relationship. And, agree with you. and so that was like, I think that's, I responded. He's not trained to say that, by the way. You know, like like that's not a part of the training. Um, that his response was who he is as a human being. Um, Kim is is an amazing, amazing young man, and um, and and just a genuine heart. And so, like, that's what I love about that's what I love about cold email is is the aspect of like your personality shines. You know, I'm I, I'm a different personality. I'm not that nice as he is. Uh, I do have nice tendencies, but like the Hallmark thing, you're not going to get that from me. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's, there's every personality is different and that's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. And, and that's also, that shows in a cold email is if you're just robotic and you're sending the same thing to everyone, like yeah. actually, and you know, not just the personalization, but how someone personalizes it, it does show like the human side. And mm -hmm. oftentimes when you respond, I was responding to see if, if like a lot of times I will say, yes, I want to hear about your service. And then you never even hear a response. I'm like, why yeah. are you doing cold outreach? Yeah. If you're not even going to respond to someone who actually reaches out. So maybe they're so shocked with their bad outreach that they got a response. Just when just so showing there's another human on the other end and gets a response is also above and beyond what most people do as well. So do you mind if I interject real Go quick? Go ahead, yeah. When people, what I've realized is people love the process so much that they fall in love with it. And the minute that the process is disrupted and they actually have to put in more effort, then they stop, which is usually what happens when somebody receives a response. It's out of their realm because they're constantly hearing the word no. They hear the word yes. They don't respond because now they have to put on a new cap. And the new cap is the one that drives them freaking revenue or keeps their damn job. And they don't do it because they're like, you know what? Actually, I have another KPI or a quota to hit and it's 50. And I'm just using a number, 50 emails a day. Uh, I need to get that more than I do that actual sale from the guy that responded. And, and it's, it's just so, so, it's so interesting why people do that. But again, going back to just like, our mentality is we, and the dirt comment that you originally stated, 
we are okay. I'm okay. And that our team is okay with, with that response. You know, the process is fun. It's cool. We fell in love with it, but what's even more fun is making those connections. Um, I want to talk about something we, we chatted before we hit record, which is Penji the moon. But before we talk about that, Jonathan, I'm curious, you know, with any service or software, we see that there's a certain like, lifetime value of a client, whether it's like they typically stick around for six months or 12 months, what were some things that moved the needle in your business that you saw helped increase the experience so that they stayed longer? Yeah. Um, so merch, this is going to sound silly, but Amazon merch, um, were like e-commerce as a whole. Um, Amazon merch customers was the catalyst to where we are today and still a focal point of the mm. business. Um, the, we learned a lot from how to service our customers from them because they just, they're, they need, they need stuff again, going back to the content, they need stuff. We can provide it. Um, so like that was like the jumping point um, of, of, of the company. And, and then from there, again, anybody that is a business owner, I don't care if you have one client or a hundred, you should be interviewing your customers, um, just straight up. So if you could talk to them, I think you're going to get a better insight. Um, but for the most part, um, Amazon merch allowed us to, to really understand, uh, our customers a lot better. What about, what did they tell you that helped? They just, they're, they're uh, needy, uh, not needy, but like they have a high demand in what it is that they do. And so it's just like one of those things where you go to a restaurant and uh, you start the shift at 12 o'clock and uh, you get 15 orders. And now you have to be able to cook all the food and be able to deliver it to you back in 15 minutes in order for the customer to be happy uh, and, and the food to be warm. So the, the same aspect the rules apply for this. Uh, we had a, a giant increase in customers. Uh, we had to service them. We had to figure it out. We did it. Um, and so I'm, I'm very grateful for that, for, for that, that the, the, those teachings that they, uh, they, 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 they whooped their butt and they still whoop our butt, but it's, it's in the best possible way. You know, um, I want to talk about and ask you about Penji to the moon. Before I do, I want to point people towards Penji.co, which is P-E-N-J-I. Co. Are there any other places, Jonathan, we should point people towards online? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can go .com. Um, .com? Okay. You can do .com. We recently have the .com, which is really cool to say that you like you own, you know, Boardwalk or in Monopoly board, so to speak. Um, but .co is, is, the, is the website too. Um, Penji to the moon. Yeah. I mean, I'm here. I'm curious to see your yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, I encourage everyone to go there. If you want to see, they have some really cool, beautiful design on their homepage. So they practice what they preach. And you could see, I love the, you know, the, the images on the page. And I love the, just how the design pops out on, the, on your website in general. So even if you're like, well, maybe not right now, I would encourage you to check out their website and just see what, how they, you know, practice what they preach and what their design looks like on their site. Um, yeah, so tell me about what what you meant by Penji to the moon. Well, uh, I, I like um, the stock market. And so I thought it was funny. Like, there's a lot of the, the GameStop stuff and the AMC stuff. And then we randomly received a review uh, from one of our customers that said Penji to the moon. And I just thought that was very timely given. I laughed and I even emailed the person personally and I said, hey, like, you know, that was cool. But um you know, customer reviews is 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 uh, incredibly important. Um, the 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 best advocates are the people that use the service because they're the ones that are going to be able to get to explain how and why the, another person should do it too. Um, I hope Penji goes to the moon, um, not literally, but metaphorically in the aspect of just growth. But um, I think what we're doing, and and again, something I'm proud of is is we're talking to customers who are receiving legitimate benefit from a service like ours and they're kind enough to write reviews about us uh, and cool things and being able to listen to that and hear that it makes you feel good. And, and so whether you're having a down week, a down day, um, or even you're just like, you know, uh, positive vibes only, 
being able to listen to that and hear that uh it's it just it, it it motivates you so um i the reason why i share that story is is i, I highly recommend creating a customer review process uh in your business or e even if not that just some type of feedback you know even if you're a retail a customer or a retail owner right now and you're listening to this conversation um just having like a silly feedback you know how was your experience um you can use that as fuel for your team. You can use that fuel for yourself, or you can use that for your fuel for your website. What is your process for customer reviews? And, and I would encourage people, penji.co slash customer dash reviews. You can actually check out what Penji does as far as capturing and how they um, create these reviews on their website. What's your I, process I, for is, feedback? What you'll realize is that when you listen to me speak specifically everything that i say is boring as hell um and the value that, that i hopefully bring is a decent amount but like everything that we do is so primitive and boring that it's just like oh yeah i should have done that like six months ago and we just asked them like straight up is like, there an email though like at a certain point that you ask them um, like after it, oh they've been using it for two months or three months or four months or one month What's, no, it, not at all. No. Honestly, like it, it, as basic as you can possibly think is somebody sends a message that says a, something positive. Translate that to a review, because if you think about it, the customer is at the height of their excitement and their joy about using the service. If you were to capture that and have them write a review, they're probably the most likely to do it in that exact moment when they're at their height of happiness. So, yeah. you know, use that to your leverage. Yeah. yeah. So anyone sees, says something positive is like, great, let's, yeah. let's do it. And I'll hey, do the same. I may be on with someone. They'll say something, Jeremy, like I just, you know, connected with the best person ever. Like, hold on, let me hit record right now. Okay. Now talk. Yeah, no, so, for sure. Yeah. And, and that takes a lot of courage for you to do that. And so I, I applaud you for, for doing that because a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, thank you. No, record that crap. Use it as marketing. Ask for their permission. Um, you know, if, if like people don't give compliments often uh, and when they do, like you should, you should use it to your benefit, especially as a business owner. Now, if it was like your friend, that's a different story. But if you, as a business owner, you use everything, like not, don't hold back. If, if it's embarrassing, do it anyway. Who gives a crap? Like you're trying to make, are you trying to make money or are you trying to just like, you know, uh, live a, a moderate lifestyle uh, and just be mediocre for the rest of your life? Like, what do you want in your life? To me, like do whatever it takes. That's my, men my that's my mindset. Love it. Everyone check out Penji.co. Check out more episodes of the podcast. Check out Rise 25. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.